Hi there. In this video I'm going to show you when you can spot whether a function can have an inverse or not. I'm going to then show you how to find the inverse of that function. So first of all, how do we know if these functions have got inverses or not? Well the main point you need to remember is that only a bijective function can have an inverse. Okay? It's worth repeating this. Only a bijective function can have an inverse. So all we need to do is consider, are these functions bijective? OK, let's look at the first function. f of x equal to 2x plus 3. It's a linear function, and if I was to sketch it, you would see that it looks like... OK, let's see. The y-intercept is 3, so 1, 2, 3. This point here is on it. And the slope is 2. So we'll go across 1 and up 2, so this point is also on it. So let's draw it like that. Now any function which is always increasing or always decreasing is 1 to 1. Also, a linear function is always on 2 because it goes on forever. So all of the elements in our y-axis, which is our codomain. Remember, y-axis is our outputs, so every single element along this y-axis will have something mapped onto it. And all of the elements of the x-axis are mapped onto one and only one output. And each output has only got one input. So every linear function is bijective. Okay, let's look at the next one now. We have f of x equal to e to the power of x. Now e is a constant, so the variable is the power. When the variable is a power, we call it the exponential function. And when the base is positive, the output will always be positive, because any positive number raised to a power gives you a positive output. So, that means our outputs are always going to be positive. Which means that some of the codomain, which is the y-axis, will not have anything mapped onto it. Which means that it's not surjective. Okay, uh, a quick sketch of this graph looks like, let's say it goes kind of like this. Okay, so this is f of x equal to e to the power of x. And because there are all these values down here of the y-axis, which... So it's not a bijection. However, however, you've got to be careful with this because there's something you can do to that function which would make it bijective. If we change our codomain, so we have f of x equal to e to the x, and this time it's f from reals to just the positive reals. Well, this time everything in our codomain has got something mapped onto it. So this is a bijection. A bijection. Okay, so so far we've seen one that is definitely bijective, one that definitely isn't because the codomain has got elements on it which don't have anything mapped onto them. And let's have a look at f of x equal to x squared. Okay. f of x equal to x squared. Let's do a quick sketch of it. Okay, again we have the problem that some of these points down here in the codomain have nothing mapped onto them. So this one is because we're told that f goes from the reals to the reals, okay, which is all of the reals, so from minus infinity to plus infinity. This is not surjective. So it's not bijective. However, why don't we try that trick we did a moment ago? and restrict the codomain, this time 
from the reals to the reals plus well this time all of the elements of our codomain from zero to plus infinity do have something mapped to them but now we have a problem because some of these elements in our codomain have more than one point mapped to them like this point for example has got let's call this one B is mapped onto it and A is also mapped onto it so let's call this point C so we could say that for example F of A is C but F of B is also C so that means we have a point we have two points in fact in our domain which are mapped to the same point in our codomain which means that it's not injective so it's not injective so even though we restricted our codomain and made this one surjective it's still not injective so in either case it's not a bijection So my original function, f of x equal to x squared, isn't invertible for two reasons. It's not surjective and it's not injective. And even if we restrict the codomain to r plus, it's still not injective, so it's not a bijection. However, we've no such troubles with our last function. f of x equal to x cubed. Because a sketch of that function reveals that it looks like this. And you will find that all of the elements of the y-axis have got something mapped onto it so that it's onto. You will find that all of the elements of the x-axis are mapped onto one unique point on the y-axis so it's also one to one so therefore it's a bijection now in the case where we have actually found a bijective function we know that it's invertible so how do we actually find the inverse well the way to do it is this write your function as y equal to x cubed so express y in terms of x and then all we do is we write x in terms of y. So x then is equal to the cubed root of y. And you can rewrite that as, you can make this here, uh, g of x is equal to the cubed root of y. And then you will have that the composition of the two functions together, so if you did uh, g after f of x, you just get back to x again. So you have f maps from one point to the next, like so, and then g maps back again to the original point. Now the other function that we looked at was to f of x equal to 2x plus 3. So let's find its inverse. Again, write it in terms of y. Rearrange to get x in terms of y, and we get y minus 3 is equal to 2x. So x is equal to y minus 3 over 2. And we can write, if we want, g of x is equal to x minus 3 over 2. Just to have our x's as our inputs in both functions. Okay, so that completes the video on inverse functions. I've shown you how to find the inverse of a function if it's in fact bijective. And I've also helped you to see when in fact a function is bijective or not. And only the bijective functions are in fact invertible. So of the ones we saw earlier on, at the start in fact, we have that this one is not bijection this one is 
So the first and the fourth ones here do have inverses and you can see how to calculate the inverse. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me for the next one.